Hey guys, it's Roast here with another Spiral Knights video. Today, I want to cover one of the more important topics in Spiral Knights, and it's one you have to make a really big decision on really early in the game. I'm talking, of course, about the battle sprites. How do you get them? What do they do? Which one should you pick? And how to level them up as fast as possible. If you enjoy, remember to like and subscribe, and a huge thanks to my Patreons as always. But for now, let's get started with how to get your very own battle sprite. If you haven't gotten a sprite yet, don't worry, you unlock them super early on in the game. In a series of rank 2-2 missions, you'll try each sprite in order, starting with the Draken, then the Seraphings, and then the Masquerade. Once you do mission, once you do those, mission 2-3, an Eternal Bond, allows you to choose which pet you want to keep. If you pick the wrong one, or would like a second or third sprite, you can purchase them in the Supply Depot for 2,100 energy each. This is a really steep price, especially if you're just starting out, and that's why it's super important you pick the right one early on. To make sure you pick the right one, let's talk about what each sprite does. Each battle sprite has three abilities. You'll have access to the first one immediately, the second one at level 15, and the third ability all the way up at level 50. In addition to those three basic abilities, once you get your pet all the way to level 90, the first up ability can be upgraded into one of two special forms. At 95, the second ability can be upgraded, and at level 100, you can upgrade the third ability. These are their ultimate vari variations. In addition to making their abilities stronger, these upgrades also change the appearance of your battle sprite. This means that once you've maxed out your sprite, there are actually eight different max level appearances it can have depending on which ultimate ones you chose. So, let's start with what their abilities are. The Draken's three abilities are Firebolt, Flame Barrier, and Firestorm. Firebolt launches a fireball at enemies on a relatively short cooldown. Once upgraded, it can either stun monsters in the area or have a larger blast radius. Flame Barrier enhances your defense and surrounds you with fireballs. Enemies that come into contact with these take damage and can be lit on fire for more damage. Flame Barrier can be upgraded to either have more fireballs orbiting around you, or when you use it, it can provide you a speed boost. And the last ability of the Dracon is Fire Storm, which causes the Dracon to fly through and firebomb a whole area. When you've upgraded this ability, it will either grant an attack and speed boost to the party, or it will cause additional explosions. Let's move on to the Seraphinx. The Seraphinx's three abilities are Ray of Light, Heart Attack, and Angelic Aura. Ray of Light shoots a short-range beam at enemies that does damage and pushes them back. One upgrade for it makes the beam deal more damage to undead and fiends, and the other upgrade reduces the defense of enemies hit. Heart Attack is the bread and butter of the Seraphinx, and when it's used, it causes nearby enemies to have a higher drop chance for hearts when you defeat them. Iron Heart Attack, which is one of the upgrades, also gives them a chance to drop defense orbs, while Violent Heart Attack, the other upgrade, causes the afflicted enemies to explode when defeated. Lastly, Angelic Aura gives you a protective aura for up to 5 seconds that stops all damage. This also will apply to any allies that are within the radius, so if you see an ally use Angelic Aura, stand on top of them. The Seraphic Aura upgrade has a bigger radius and grants increased shield regen, and the Valkyrian Aura upgrade gives you a larger radius and a charge speed increase while inside. Finally, let's move on to the Masquerade abilities. These are Caustic Quills, Shadow Cloak, and Hexing Haze. Caustic Quills fires a spray of venomous quills at a target and can poison enemies for extra damage and to stop them healing. The Vengeful Quills upgrade causes extra quill hits to spread to a nearby target, and Virulent Quills can explode to poison nearby enemies. Second ability Shadow Cloak gives you invisibility and, if, and a defense boost until you perform an action or take damage. The Deadly Shadow Cloak upgrade gives you an attack speed and attack power boost after activation, and the Vengeful Shadow Cloak upgrade causes a stunning explosion when the ability is interrupted. Last for the Masquerade, we have Hexing Haze. This ability produces a Miasma a Fog Cloud that puts a debuff on enemies that will do a chunk of damage to them after 2.5 seconds. This Fog will last a little bit longer for each enemy you manage to Hex, and if you Hex enough enemies and they stay in the zone, you can actually hit some of them twice with the ability's damage. 
The two upgrades for this are Chaotic Haze, which gives a 22% chance to give enemies a random status effect when, they, when the damage goes off, and Haunted Haze, which causes a vengeful ghost to spawn from enemies that die from the hex damage. Now that we've covered all of their abilities, let's talk about which battle sprite fits you the best. The Dracon is best at speed clearing levels and raw damage output, but has to get near max level for most of its benefits. If you are a super, so if you are a super aggro player and willing to grind a ton, the Dracon can be very strong. That makes the Dracon best for veteran Spiral Knights players usually. The Seraphinx provides a rare chance for sustain because as you get deeper, you realize, oh man. I need HP, um, and it gets that ability at just level 15, which means it's really strong really early. If you are new to Spiral Knights, I would heartily recommend get the Seraphinx. It's also what I'm running up because, like I said, later on, healing back up when you take just one or two hits is a huge issue. Like, enemies will easily deal, like, eight hearts in a hit, and you're just like, oh, well, okay, I didn't need those anyways. <laughs> Lastly, we have the Masquerade. The Masquerade focuses on its poison damage, which it unlocks at level 1. This can be really strong for certain bosses, like the Royal Jelly, and it also gives bonus damage on other bosses because when enemies are poisoned, they do less damage and take extra. Hexing Haze also provides good room clear, and the Shadow Cloak lets you speed through places if, that you don't have to fight if you don't want to. So if you're looking for something between the Dracon and Seraphinx in terms of offense-defense mix, try the Masquerade. Now that you have your sprite, you want to level it up as fast as possible. This is because you'll unlock the other skills and because you can upgrade the ones it already has. As the pet levels, you'll also unlock perks that increase your damage to different enemies or can do things like increase your max HP. The limit for leveling will be based on what star level materials you have and your sprite's appetite level. The appetite comes back over time, 5 ticks per hour, and it also increases a little bit faster when you are clearing levels in the clockworks. So, to power level as quickly as possible, make sure you're feeding high star level materials to your pet all that you can, and clearing levels on repeat, and making sure to stop and feed them each level so they don't get full and be stuck not leveling. Hey guys, it's Roast here with one more tip on leveling your battle sprites and specifically putting skill points into your abilities. So, like I've talked about, your pet will get three different abilities total, right? Um, in addition to that, some of your pet's abilities are going to be better than the others. For example, for the Seraphings, the heart attack ability is generally considered the best of the first two because the Ray of Light doesn't do that much damage and it has a really short range, whereas heart attack gets you restorative hearts, which become really important later on. There's a trick you can do um, if you weren't if you weren't sure, as you get you get skill points as you're leveling, right? You don't have to spend those immediately, and they aren't tied to any specific skill. So leveling one through fifteen, you'll get a couple skill points. You don't have to spend those immediately, and if you save them, you can make sure that heart attack gets six skill points right away. So you can full in the folk, full up the cooldown reduction and full up the extra hardy immediately. Um, this is really nice for leveling up the stronger skills as opposed to the weaker skills. So I'm doing the same thing right now where Ray of Light's sitting at zero and I'm just saving my skill points to level 50 so that I can upgrade the Aegis ability as second that I get it because that will be, again, much better than Ray of Light, right? So uh, just wanted to let you guys know that. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you for watching. Catch you later. Um, once your heat bar for your pet fills up, you will use a special food item that you can craft at red alchemy stations, and the level you need of it depends on what level your pet's at. You can also buy food or trade it for it as you're, if you're desperate. Once you hit the breakpoints of 15, 50, 90, 95, and 100, you'll have to use evil crystals to le evolve your pet. Uh, but you get some early on from the mish story missions, and you can buy them later from, for energy in the supply deep. With all that said, you should be able to pick the right pet and get it super strong right away. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe for more Spiral Knights content. And if you are new to Spiral Knights and want more guides, please comment below with what you want me to talk about next. I think the next one I'm going to try and make is a guide on which weapons and gear is meta and the best thing to go for right away. I really appreciate you guys watching to the end, and I also want to quickly thank my patrons for their support. Until next time, keep beefy, boys. Hello there. Ta-da!